Hey, what's up guys? John here. Do you want to know what's going to happen next in the banking collapse? Well, I'm going to walk you through exactly what is going to happen next without doubt. I believe it's 100% going to play out just like I'm going to say in this video. Uh, I know it sounds like a big prediction to, to say such a thing, but uh, February 21st, 2023, I said that global banking collapse confirmed how they're going to take your money. 19 days later, SVB collapsed, March 10th, right? Um, this situation is very clear because it's this prediction is less of a prediction. It's more of they're, they're just telling you what's going to happen. And uh, I'm just connecting the dots so we can see, you know, where we're pointing, or like what the direction is actually going to look like. So uh, and first, I'm also going to tell you before I even dive into this, what you should be doing. So if you have all your money at one bank or uh, what I'm doing and what I would suggest you to do is have options. You don't want to have all your money in one specific bank. Ideally, you want to look at the landscape of what's going on in the economy and form relationships with credit unions, local regional banks, uh, larger banks, have a variety of different banking options, and maybe you wanna diversify some money in each bank, not have all of your eggs in one basket. You wanna apply for credit cards, American Express, Visa, Bank of America, you wanna apply for all these different credit cards that you will get approved for. You don't have to go run at the balances or be irresponsible, but you can apply for the cards and use certain cards for certain things. Maybe you fill up your gas with one card. Maybe you pay utilities with another card. Maybe you do local shopping or use another card for your business. The reason that you want to do this is because we're likely going to be stepping into a situation in which many more banks are going to start to fall. And when they do, you don't want to be in one specific bank, have all your eggs in one basket, and then you have a problem with maybe accessing your funds or maybe getting credit lines, trying to establish a new line of credit with a new bank alongside a million other people. And then at that time, maybe they tighten up lending. It sounds far-fetched, right? But look at this situation, you tell me. Uh, and also, if you want to fix your credits, you can actually get approved for these credit cards, because you're gonna need, in many cases, a 700, 720 credit score, go to greatcreditfast.com. We offer a five-day free trial, a five-day free trial where we will review your credit reports. We'll go over your credit reports in detail to tell you exactly what we would do, how long we believe it would take, what the process will look like. Uh, we don't charge you any anything for the first five days. However, you do have to sign up for a third-party credit monitoring service. They do charge $1 for the first week. Uh, that's not our company, it's another company, but it'll give us access to your credit reports. Uh, then they charge $19.95 per month thereafter. So if you're interested, go to greatcreditfast.com. We would love to work with you. So First Republic Bank seized and sold to JP Morgan. Now, fascinatingly, the only reason that this bank was allowed to be sold to JP Morgan was because it failed. It failed. If it was just a regular uh, M&A, mergers and acquisitions, or a buyout, this wouldn't have been allowed. The reason for it is because uh, since it failed, they're not allowed to expand more because they already have more than 10% market share and it wouldn't be allowed by law. They wouldn't be allowed by law. So as banks begin to fail, credit unions begin to fail, and these other institutions begin to fail, JP Morgan, Wells, uh, Bank of America, these other banks are able to step in. The problem is when you have uh, a few market leaders that are essentially dominating the market, then they can set lending decisions. Maybe they can look at your energy use. Maybe they can look at uh, you know, your business that you want to get a loan on. Maybe they want to look at or allow different lending standards to take place. And they can if there's a, only a few uh, players in town. But if there's you know, the situation which we have now, it becomes much more challenging. Over 65% of all lending in America on commercial properties is by small local and regional banks. And so when you have a situation like that, then you know, it's, it's very hard to implement certain policies. So what I believe is very likely going to happen here is we are going to start to see a situation in which we are gonna have a lot more regional banks and small local banks go down. Um, and we're witnessing this massive transfer. If, we, if you just look at uh, you know, what's going on right now with Capital One, their profits fell 60% in Q1 as credit card defaults mount, right? Huge, 60%. That's not like a you know, five, 8% decline, 60%. They're gonna issue massive layoffs to guarantee because how are they gonna be able to offset all these losses, right? Shutting down offices, closing facilities, um, you know, firing people, outsourcing talent to other locations that are a little bit more uh, cost effective. They're gonna be doing restructuring, I can almost promise you. A lot of lenders are gonna be doing the same exact thing. But when you look at these regional banks that are lending over 60% on commercial properties, and you look at their exposure, they're, they're in trouble. Like they're in real trouble. I'm not saying this to scare you, but look at the numbers. 
Like uh, the average vacancy rate in most of these office buildings nationwide is like 30 to 40 percent. San Francisco is north of 40 percent, right? So if you have 100 units in a building, 30 of them would be collecting no rent. Then the other 70 are, you know, likely re they're renting for less rent than they were two or three years ago because there's so much supply. So if you have increased vacancies, decreasing rents or flatlining rents, you have increased borrowing cost. You know, increased borrowing cost by 350 to 400 basis points. That's substantial. An increased insurance cost, increased taxes. It's a problem, right? And these small local regional banks have massive exposure, trillions worth of exposure to these loans. And so when you look at that, you look at record high credit card debt and a lot of defaulting debt, these auto loan problems, I mean, you have a trillion and a half in outstanding auto loans, most of which is underwater. Uh, you start to just connect the dots. There's a lot of exposure here. And as they continue to increase interest rates, something's going to break. And I believe it's going to be the small banks, and we're going to see a massive consolidation of these banks in the coming 24 months. That's personally what I believe. And I think that uh, you want to make sure that you are positioned and you don't have uh, you know, everything banking on just one thing. And I think that's one valuable lesson that a lot of us have learned over the last few years is having all your eggs in one basket, you know, years ago probably was much more safe than it is today. Now, anything can happen at any time. You just don't know how things are going to play out. So you want to have options where you can pivot and move with the times. They're even discussing right now the FDIC to reopen bank deposit insurance debate. Remember they were talking about a $2 trillion backstop with small local regional banks? Now, what I'm concerned about is we could see a situation in which they do some type of bail-in scenario and people start to beg the FDIC, like, please, please give us, you know, give us our money back, bail us out. And the FDIC comes back, okay, look, we'll help you. Uh, you know, we can do a trillion, we can do $2 trillion, we can backstop this, but, you know, um, because of this, X, Y, Z has to happen, right? And that sounds like, you know, speculation, but if you look at the chain of events that are in unfolding right now, it seems very likely. Like if you look at what Ken Griffin said, he said about 60 days ago or 45 days ago that consumers have $1 trillion in overall deposits burning $120 billion a month. And by the end of the year, they're not gonna have any money. So if you look at how banks are actually run, you know, they invest your deposits. What, how do banks stay in business if they have less deposits or very small amounts of deposits to invest? And at the same time, their former investments are failing dramatically, right? how they wouldn't stay in business. Uh, so I do believe we are gonna witness this. I'm not saying this to scare anyone. I've seen some comments below like, oh, we're trying to scare people. You know, don't you put out anything positive? Look, I this is a finance channel. I study what's going on because I wanna invest and I wanna make smart decisions and I don't make decisions based on emotion. So I try to remove emotion and look at things clearly for what's actually happening, what's really going on, so that I can put myself in a position to make a smart decision. And I'm sure that you'd like the same thing, true, real information that we could all take to the bank. Not literally, of course, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is pretty crazy because uh, I believe the next couple of years are gonna be very, very interesting. What do you think about this situation? Do you think that we're gonna see a situation in which there's only gonna be a few really, really, really big banks and these few big banks are going to, um, you know, it's going to be a little more challenging to get loans, to get financing, and to, uh, to operate within them. I personally do believe that it'll be very far-fetched that our current banking system is the exact same two or three or five years from now. I would think that it would be extremely far-fetched. I think it would be very unlikely, to be honest. So if you look at just the structural changes that have recently occurred, uh, and all of the uh, panic about this. I mean, Warren Buffett's talking about a JP Morgan Chase, was talking about it two weeks ago. Uh, even Biden, a lot of people were talking about this happening. Um, but it, it seems like it's going to be happening very, very soon. Now, if you ask, what are the big opportunities here? There's going to be tons of opportunity. And the massive opportunity, I believe, we're going to start seeing people begin to sell off things. If you look at how the U.S. economy is currently structured, oh, a large chunk of the U.S. economy works for small business. Small business. And how does small business stay afloat? With consumers spending money, face-to-face -face relationships, human interaction. And so what happens when we step into a situation in which we have an affordability crisis going on, we have other problems happening, people are gonna spend more money at corporations, 
as that begins to happen and small businesses stepping into an inflationary environment with high labor costs, we're gonna start seeing more and more small businesses close. What are small businesses gonna do? They're likely gonna start selling off assets, uh, a lot of which are probably gonna be small duplexes, single family homes, triplexes, fourplexes. So if you're renting, I guarantee you could probably see a lot of that inventory hitting the market uh, over the next 12 to 24 months. And you're talking over 20 million household units. 20 million units are owned by small mom and pops. It's dramatic. And if you start to see this inventory hit the market, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're in a position to, if you're renting right now and you're already kind of stressing out about how much money you're spending in rent, you're gonna to wanna to be positioned to be able to buy one of those deals, to be able to you know, try to build out some type of mode of safety around yourself and your family. Uh, I believe the next couple of years are gonna be a massive wealth transfer and it's all of our responsibilities to, uh, to do their homework, do the research, look at what's going on, pay attention to what's going on in banking, look at the economy uh, and make smart, decisions. I think one of the smartest decisions you can make right now is having different relationships with different lenders and banks, but also having a great credit score and positioning yourself to where you are out of high interest rate consumer debt. Credit card debt, it's, I mean, you can't get rich paying somebody else 25% interest. But there are still banks right now doing balance transfer options at 0% interest rate for 6 to 21 months. So if you do have high interest consumer rate debt, it's a great chance right now to still get out of it. We'd love to be a part of that success at greatcreditfast.com. Give us a call at 561-430-5900 and uh, add me on IG for content I won't post here. Catch you guys later.